most unique Bible teachers I've heard in a long time, and that's Brother Danny. All right. Also, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless Brother Downey. Yeah. Unique is another word for strange. I learned that while back. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad for what God has done for me. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. This is the day, as Brother, as he said, today, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. And be glad. Sometimes that's hard to do. Yes. yes. It's really hard to do when things are not going your way. <clears throat> and sickness or problems or yes. you know, somehow our problems that we have that come our way. They don't take a day off on Sunday because Sunday is Sunday. Yes. Our problems continue right on through Sunday. Yes, they come do. On. And yet, and yet, God doesn't, he, he doesn't tell us. Rejoice and be glad on Sunday and worry about it the rest of the week. For he didn't tell us to rejoice and be glad the rest of the week and then suffer through Sunday. But day in, day out, problems or no problems, challenges or no challenges, somehow he gives us the strength to rejoice in him. And I'll tell you, I, 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 I know a lot of us have had days that... Uh, there were days when I can tell you what, I didn't feel very well. Lying in the hospital and other things that uh, just, you're not aware of your surroundings and you're, you're, you know that you're not doing very well and you're not sure of the outcome. And yet, even in a problem like that, somehow you can, even though you may not even be able to say <coughs> the name of Jesus, you can't say, oh God, help me today, help me today. You may not be able to say that. But somehow, it's amazing how he can communicate with us and we can communicate with him without a word being said. To somehow dwell on him and that comforting spirit can come no matter what the situation. And we can rejoice and be glad. I think that's, you know, there's, there's a, a million advantages in living for God. But one of the big ones is, is that we can, in times of trouble, have comfort and rejoice. Can you imagine living in the world as an atheist or agnostic or just not too sure about God, you know? A lot of people are that way. And the problems come... The problems come, and where do they go? Where do you go? I mean, we, I guess that's the reason for uh, the explosion in counseling services that, are, that has prevailed in the last 20 or 30 or 40 years. That people have no place to go when they do need outside help, when they need guidance or something. And so because they don't place their trust in God, or they don't know how to place their trust in God, or they don't know where to place their trust in God, then they place their trust in other people, other humans. That's not the best place to go when you need God, God is with other people. Because other people, even professionals, I found that you can talk to two different doctors, even cardiologists. You can talk to two different cardiologists, and sometimes you get two different that is true. About right. the situation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. About the situation. But oh, I'm glad that you can. I can go to God. I can go to Him. I can call Him in the name of Jesus. And I don't need to doubt His word. I don't need to verify His word. I don't need to verify His how He makes me feel, because I know it is genuine and it is it is from a concern for me. And. I can rejoice in him. Yes. That's a blessing, ladies and gentlemen, whether you believe it or not. That is a blessing. Yes, it is. That we can rejoice in him. In him. In any situation. Any situation. Yeah. Any situation. That's right. Oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad for what he has done for me and for us and for our church. That God has been with us. 
Amen. I need to get into my lesson. I have one set of scriptures I'll to read for you today. In Numbers, the 32nd chapter, and the verses 1 through 5. Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazar and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle, the children of Gad and the children of Reuben, and it doesn't say so, but also half the tribe of Manasseh, came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priest, and unto the princes of the congregation, saying, Ataroth and Dibon and Jazer and Nimrod and Heshbon and Eliela uh, and Shebon, Shebon and Nebo and Beon, even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle, and thy servants have cattle. We've got cattle. Wherefore, said they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto the servants for a possession, and bring us, bring us not over in the Jordan. Yes. Amen. Under the reading, can you say amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. You can be seated. <coughs> Just to review, I know you've heard this story probably a million times, but the children of Israel have traveled for all these years, leaving Egypt, 12 different tribes. I've heard all kinds of numbers as far as how many people were walking through the desert, anywhere from several hundred thousand up to as many as possibly five million. We're not sure exactly, but there was a lot of people walking through the desert, headed toward this promised land that God had promised Moses and the people. They traveled for all these years, all these years, and now they're on the banks of Jordan. They're overlooking Jordan, and on the other side is the promised land, the land that God promised to them. They were inside. They realized, can you imagine, can you imagine anybody walking you know, they, the Bible tells us that they, they wandered for 40 years. Imagine hundreds of thousands of people in tents wandering around the desert for 40 years. I know the Bible tells us that their clothes did not deteriorate and things like this, but it had to be a trying experience. And now they are looking over to the promised land, that their, their, their destination. And they realize they're going, to have, they're going to have to take that land also, conquer that land, just like the rest of the land that they had wandered through. And he realized there was going to be battles involved. And he looked over there, and even though they saw the promised land, they looked around where they were at this time. They looked around, and they said, look at the grass. Man, the grass is three feet tall. Our cows, cattle are... They're gaining weight just wandering through this place. And they're watered, and the weather is perfect. It's a perfect place for cattle, and we have many cattle, many cattle. You know what? This is okay. <clears throat> this is good enough. This is this land that we're in now. I know the promised land's over there, but this land right here is good enough. Now, um, there's, I am not a minister. Don't care to be, thank you very much. But there's times when I read something, I think, boy, if I were a preacher, this would preach. And I think this statement, this is good enough, would preach, brother. <coughs> because what do we do in our walk, in our walk with God sometimes? We struggle, and, we, and, we, and we've given our heart to him, but we, 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 we live for him, and we have to, you know, somehow in our walk with God, we, 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 we try our best to serve him, but in our serving him, what does he do? He blesses us, and, and, and we sit back, and we think to ourselves, we think to ourselves, you know, I'm doing pretty well. At the end of the month, I have a little bit of money left over after paying my bills. I'm reasonably healthy. I live in a decent place. 
drive a decent car. My kids be, behave decently. Everything seems to be going okay. Now, if I continue to, to devote more and more time to the church and to God, and I know that in serving Him, things may be going well today, but there's going to be problems along the way. But you know, I'm kind of satisfied where I am. This is good enough. I ask you, I ask you today, your walk with God, whatever it may be today, is it good enough? Is it good enough? Are you satisfied? Even though, you know, our 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 promised land is heaven. That's what we're looking for. Yes. And I and, and we're we're looking for the coming of the Lord. And I think in some ways we are just like the children of Israel. So we're standing on the banks of Jordan looking over into the promised land. We're not looking over a river. We're not looking over a bank. But I'll tell you what, we're looking up. We're looking amen. up. Yes. And I think I can yes, see amen. in the promised land. Not yes. too far in the future we can see the yes. promised land. Yes. We can see the promised land. And yet it is so easy because of the struggles that we live here, that we that we have here. And yet in our struggles, we have some success. It's so easy in our walk with God to say, this is good enough. I pray enough. I've studied the Bible enough. No, I'm it's faithful not enough. enough. I'm faithful enough. I do my share. I do my share. And that's the way those, those children of, of, of those tribes felt. They had, they had struggled with like all the rest, but they had reached a place Yes. Where they were satisfied. Oh, help us not. Amen. Help us not to be satisfied. That's right. Where we are. Help us not to say, I'm doing my share. That's all I need to do. That's all I need to do. Give us that guidance today. Think about the promises that God gave to the children of Israel when they entered, if they, when and if they, when they entered the promised land. I'll just read this to you from Joshua, the first chapter. Moses, my servant, is dead. By this time, Moses had died. Joshua is leading them. God tells, Mo, uh, tells Joshua, Now therefore, arise. He's talking to the children of Israel. Go over, to jo over this Jordan, thou, and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Notice the promise. Here's the first one. Every place... That the sole of your foot shall tread upon yes. that I have given to you. Yes. Amen. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Yes. Have you ever looked at the geography? That's a lot of land. Yes. That is east of Jordan to the Euphrates. Euphrates is east of Jordan. From there to the Mediterranean Sea, all the way north and south, almost to Egypt. That's a lot of land. Right. All this, he said, shall be your coast. Here's the second promise. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thou not and shall I divide. For an inheritance this land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe and do according to all the law which the most which Moses my servant commanded thee turn not it from uh, turn not from it yes. for the to the right hand or to the left third promise that thou mayest prosper wherever you go yes not only will he be with you but you're going to prosper this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meet medit Media, meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all the things that is written therein for then then shalt thou make thy way prosperous and here's the fourth one then thou shalt have good success you're going to be successful yes. you're going to prosper God's going to be with you Yes. wherever you step it's right. going to be yours Amen. how Amen. would you like for the Lord to appear to you sometime and give you those promises 
Come on. Amen. In this life. Yeah. Wherever you go, you're going to prosper. Wherever you go, you're going to be successful. I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Not only wherever you go, but wherever you go, it's yours. Yes. You can claim that. You can claim that. Those are the promises that God gave to the children of Israel if, if they entered into the promised land. The problem was the children of Reuben and Gad and the half the tribe of Manasseh, they had worked and struggled, as I mentioned to you already, and they were tired. They looked at where they were, and they said, this is where I am now, where we are now. Is okay. Let's compromise a little bit. We're close to the promised land. We're close. Yes. And this is okay. We're comfortable. I mean, plenty of feed for the cattle, a good place for us to grow and prosper and things like this. Let's just settle here. Kind of, you know, kind of a balance. Let's just compromise. The trouble with compromise sometimes, it comes into the guy in the guise of a blessing sometimes. You know, God. We, we try to we serve God to the best we can. He begins to bless us. And in our blessings, we have a tendency to relax. And back Amen. Home. And we say to ourselves, you know, God has blessed me. And I'm doing okay, so why, why stress myself and go further? Why stress myself and give more? Why stress myself and, and serve more? Whatever God wants us to do. Compromise, the trouble is, also has an influence on other people. The thing about if you read if you read further into the into the history of the children of Reuben and Gad and Manasseh, because they stayed where they were, because they stayed where they were, over the period of the next few years, they were absorbed by the Moabites, and they're probably, you know, we've heard of the lost tribes of Israel. We're not sure what happened to those tribes because they were put outside outside that promised land. Compromise in the short term doesn't seem to have any bad effect. I don't need to work any harder for God than I am now. And sure enough, nothing happens. Nothing bad happens. And so we convince ourselves that we're doing all we need to do. And we stay where we are. They lived outside the boundaries, and because they lived outside the boundaries, when I say the boundaries of promised land, even though they were in an area of comfort, they felt good. They lost out on all the promises that God gave to the children of Israel if they went into the promised land, if they went into the promised land. How can we live today outside the boundaries of the promised land? The place where God wants us to be. Just like the children of those, those, those tribes. They lived outside the area of God's promise. In other words, he told them that if, when you go into the, into the land of uh, the promised land, wherever you put your foot, that's yours. Yes. It will not be taken from you. Yes. But they were living in a fair area that even though it was wonderful and grass and things like this, it was not promised to them. And in time, they begin to lose. They begin to lose what they had. It's easy to live outside the boundaries of God. And interesting enough, you know, we can we can be in church and be outside the boundaries that He wants us to be. Amen. Think about Amen. this: in the area of faithfulness. Faithfulness. Yeah. We can be faithful. We can be faithful. To a certain point. We determine I'm going to be faithful to a certain point. To a certain point. But they started asking me to do more. I'm doing my share. That's all I need to do. Let me ask you this. When you when you come to church, is the preacher surprised that you're here? Come on. Or if you don't come to church, is the preacher wondering, where are they? They're yeah. supposed to be here. There's a difference in the two. There's a difference in the two. Yes. In the area of, of holiness, we're supposed to be a holy people. A holy people. I wonder if 
Brother Smith were to stumble up, stumble into us at Walmart or someplace like this, are we maintaining the holiness that He wants us, that God wants us to maintain in our in our walk with God? Are we raising our hands and worshiping and saying Hallelujah, preaches this brother or sister where it happens to be yes, on Sunday or during the week? God's on the back burner. God's on the back burner. And believe me, I'm not, I'm not trying to condemn you by any means. I'm, try, I'm talking to myself as much as anybody else. Believe me, I am. It's so easy That's right. to think about church on Sunday morning and Thursday night and maybe Monday morning prayer meeting and the rest of the time not think about it. And then when I say church, I'm not talking about this church building or even Brother Smith, but I'm talking about what God has done what God has done for me. Yes. He tells us to pray continually. Yes. Pray continually. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we're constantly mumbling Jesus, Jesus, Jesus? I don't think so. But I do think it is. I do think it means that we keep our keep a mind receptive to Him. Yes. And think about Him as the, as the hours of the day go by. Right. Amen. And when something good pops up, we say, thank you, Lord. Right. Yes. If something bad pops up, we say, Lord, give me strength. Lord, yes. give me strength. If nothing happens, we say, Lord, thank you for a quiet day. Thank Amen. you for a quiet But we're constantly thinking about him, constantly thinking about him. We can, we can be committed and dedicated to a point. And at some point beyond that, we, we, we choose not to to go to a better level. Even in our worship for God. Do we worship God to a certain level and beyond that, I'm not doing that. They're not going to make me do this. I don't want to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'll worship Him in my own personal way. We, that's, a, that's, a, that's an easy term for us to use today. Is you want to have my own personal way of serving God. And, I, and we do each of us to a certain extent do but at the same time at the same time I wonder what would happen if we worshipped a little more Come on. if yes. we prayed a little more Yes. if we thought about him a little more just a, right. not, not a change of life but just Lord give me strength to, to be so thankful I just, I, when, I, when the minister says, let's worship, I'll say, thank you, Jesus, amen, and put your hands back down and see what's going to happen next. But be willing to, to, to reach out to him, to reach him and call on him to the maximum that we possibly can, to the maximum that we possibly can. Notice what happened to those people, the children of Israel, who did go into into the land of Israel, to the, to the promised land. And Joshua, and the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he sware to give unto their fathers, and they possessed it, and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about, according to all that he sware unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies unto their hand. There failed not aught of any good thing, which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel, all came to pass. If they entered into the promised land, every promise that God gave to the children of Israel, God gave, and they received. I thought it's interesting, you know, these tribes were saying, we want to, we want to stay where we are. We're happy where we are. And Moses Attempted to make them feel a little guilty. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, Gad, to the children of Reuben, and to the Manasseh, Shall your brethren go to war, and shall you sit here? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord hath given them? Yes. And you read on, I'm not going to read the whole story to you, but here's what happened. These three tribes said, Okay. We'll help you conquer the land. We'll help you conquer the land. But yes. once it's over, once it's over, we want to go back to our home, back to the east side, east of the Jordan, yeah, east of the Jordan River. Yes. And so they helped 
These three tribes helped Israel conquer the land. They were, they helped in the work, but they weren't committed to the, to the work. That's right. There's a big difference. Even though, and the thing is, even, even though they didn't, they went to help and said, when it's over, we're going home. Even they, God blessed. Yes. Joshua said, he told them. Then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh and said to them, You have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have obeyed my voice and all I have commanded you. You have not left your brother in these many days. They wouldn't help them take the promised land. But have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brethren, those who had entered into the promised land, as he promised them. Therefore now ye return, and get you unto your tents, and unto the land of your possession, which the Moses, which Moses the servant of the Lord gave you on the other side of Jordan. Yes. But here's the warning. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses the servant of the Lord charged you, to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways, to yes. keep his commandments and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Yes. And of course the, the Reubenites and the Gadites and the Manasseh people said, we'll do that, we'll do that. We're gonna serve God in our land. In our land that there is no security. God did not promise us Wherever we put our foot, it's going to be ours. But we still think we can serve God there. We can serve God there. I wonder, have we chosen sometimes to live in the world? I know when I'm, I'm talking about, I know we physically live in the world, but as far as, as close to the world as we possibly can. You know, with just a certain amount of holiness, a certain amount of dedication, a certain amount of faithfulness because we say to ourselves I can be faithful to God I can I can do these other things that detract me from God and still live for God I can still live for God just like they said just like they said we we're going to be outside the promises outside the promised land but we'll follow all the all the requirements that Moses and God, that God has given Moses you know, it reminds me years ago in Wyoming, where we lived for many, many years, 17 years, most of the churches up there are small, home mission churches, kind of like this one, just, you know, relatively small churches. But it's because the people up there are very, very independent. And more than I have had more than one cowboy tell me, I don't need no church. The mountains are my church. <laughs> yes. I can go into the hills and the beauty. That's where God is. I can worship him there. And then you ask, but do you? Do you That's worship right. God there? Can you worship God there? Well, I feel a peace. I feel a peace. And just like the, you know. those, those children, those three tribes, we can, we can be away from the promised land. And I can still live for God. There's people living, there's people who are not in this church today who are convinced they don't need this church. Yes. Because they can live for God. Right. They can well, live for God where they are. They, 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 we don't need, they don't need the church. But somehow that attitude still, still, still lives. You have to have the church. Still lives. And they just choose somehow to live outside the blessings of God. Let me ask you this. Have we chose to live? Have we chose to live just outside the blessings of God? Close enough that we can see the church. Right. You know, just like those the, 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 yes. those tribes, they were so they were just across the river. They could see the promised land. I wonder how many of us live just across the river from the promised land. Yes. And we're doing it purposely, number one, because I could I don't need the church. I don't need the church. But I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be close to it just in case. Right. Just yes. in case. Just in case. 
I may need that preacher someday. Or I may need those may need those people someday. Or something may happen and I need to get back in church. I want to be close enough so it doesn't take me much of a tra- much of distance to get back. <clears throat> right. Oh, it's so easy. There's so I've, I've said this more than once. There's so many things in the world today that are designed that if you look for a scripture and say, is there a sin against that? You can't find it. There's no, no scripture. No, there's no scripture. But I am convinced that Satan has changed his tactics. Yes. Instead of telling us it's okay to kill, it's okay to rob, it's okay to steal, we know we know better than that. We know better than that. Correct. Yes. But what he tells what he sends us are all these things that do nothing more than just distract us right. from our walk with God. Yes. To the point that these distractions pull us out, pulls us across the Jordan River into that land that's not yes. promised to us. And yes. even as we're over there, even as we're over there, with 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 all these distractions, we think, I'm still good. I'm still good. I can still live for God. I'm not that far away. There's nothing in here that says I can't do this or this or this or this. There's no scripture about that. Right. And so I'm okay. I'm okay. But if you put all those little pieces together. Yes. The interesting thing about wire. A little piece of aluminum wire about yay long. If it's a millimeter, you know, half a millimeter, five-tenths of a millimeter, if you're, well, finer than that, probably, you can wind it up on your fingers and pop it like this and break it. You can break it. But if you take that little wire and put a hundred wires with it and wind it together and wind it together, yes. you're not going to break it by popping it with your arms no. because the strength is there. Right. Somehow, if we stay in the promised land, if we stay in the promised land, we are winding ourselves together with the rest of the church. Right. Each of us is a single strand, maybe, of a, of a tremendous cable, it's a bad analogy, but a tremendous cable that with all of us drawn together, every single strand, every single one of us together, yes. becomes stronger than all of us put you know, separately. Amen. All of us separately. Help us somehow to be drawn to him. The problem we have sometimes is like, think about Lot's wife. Lot's wife was like, you know, did her husband and their two girls' children. They saw what was coming to Sodom and Gomorrah. God gave them a chance to escape. Gave them to a chance to escape and they're running for their lives for the mountains. And the Bible, the God tells them, don't look back, don't look back. And so they were running and running, almost to safety, almost to safety. In fact, they were away from the danger of the fire and brimstone that fell on Sodom and Gomorrah. Gomorrah was somehow the wife of Lot. Felt look compelled, back. compelled to look around. Yes. And the Bible tells us she changed, changed to a pillar of salt. Anyway, she was, she, she, she lost her safety. Because she lost her safety because simply by turning around and yes. looking back. Was there a scripture about someone with a plow, you don't look back from whence you came? I forget exactly, I can't quote the scripture. But uh, we don't look back. Yes. Think about, there's a, another story, quick story I'll tell you. In our church in Casper, we had a young man in evangelist and his wife come preach to us one time. A, a powerful young man as far as preaching, a strong preacher. But something that I, he did struck me at the time. And the first time we took the worst, you know, my wife and I, we entertained the, the evangelist sometimes and took him to dinner and whatnot like that along with our pastor and wife. And I was talking to him and he whipped out his wallet and had all these pictures of what he looked like before he got into the church. He had been saved at the age of 19 or 20, something like this. And he was only 25 or so then. But all these pictures, he was a rock, uh, rock uh, guitarist, long hair, druggist, you know, into drugs and things like this. And all these pictures are what he looked like back then. And I thought that, I mean, it'd be nice to have one picture. You know, here's what I was, here's how God saved me. Yes. Like this. I just thought it was odd. And anyway, the services went on, and we had a good row. 
I found out, we found out two or three years later that he had given up ministry and gone back to where he was before. And I wonder if he was in those photos. Oh, yes. He was looking back. And yes, thinking, he was. And thinking, boy, I had some great times back then. Yes. I played some hot music. It was cool. And, and, and I could make that guitar yes. talk, man. Yes. I wonder how it, let me try it. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I still got it. I still got it. I still uh -huh. got it. I still got it. I wonder if I could do it part time and preach. I'll try that. Yes. That's, that's, that's the way the process goes. Yes, it that's is. That's the way the process goes. Yes. Oh, friends, I don't know where you came from in your life mm -hmm. as far as your, your, right. your history is concerned. Man. But I can tell you this don't look back. Don't, don't look back. Don't look back. Because you know what will happen Set if, you, if you look back. Things that are up. If you look back, you're going to only see the good things. Yes. You'll see the fun things. Man, I can make that music. I know it's so uh -huh. cool. I forgot about. I didn't think about the. I, when I look back, I didn't. I didn't remember the problems I had with drugs and all the other stuff. Correct. Yes. And that's what he did. He he, he thought of only. He began to. And it's so easy. We look back. back. Up was good. And we go back. Yeah. Where we were. We were at that. At one time. I wonder sometimes if our bodies are in church, but our minds are elsewhere. That's right. Oh, yes. Our minds are elsewhere. Yes. Sometimes it's so easy to serve God, I know it sounds strange, to serve God regrettably. That's true. I'm going to serve God, but oh, I sure had some good times back then. And now I can't because it's against the church policy. Can't do it anymore. Uh -huh. oh, I sure had some fun back then. Yes. I sure had some good times back then. <clears throat> I'm going to serve God. You know, I'm, I'm supposed to have the yes. Holy Ghost now. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, I'm supposed to be saved, so I guess I'll just have to give it all up. And somehow we, 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 it, what does that do that, that tempers our worship? We try to go through the, through the motions of worshiping, but our mind, in our mind, we've already looked back. We've already looked back. It's just a matter of following our mind. Sooner or later. It's going to happen. You know, I told you in the beginning, the, uh, the uh, in closing in about five or ten minutes, all those promises that God gave the children of Israel, if they went into the promised land, and I ask you, think what it'd be if we got those, if we received those promises, that somehow He appeared to us and gave us those promises. I have a surprise for you, ladies and gentlemen. He did. He did. And the children of Israel, Joshua said, There shall be, there shall not any man be able to stand before you all these days. That was for the children of Israel. Uh -huh. In James 4 7, this is for us. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yes. And those are the children of Israel, every step that you took, the people would not be able to stand up to them. Today, all we have to do, when we see the devil, he will flee from us. Amen. He can't stand before us. If we are in the promised land. Amen. If we're over here across yes. Jordan, yes. across Jordan, we're going to talk to him and say, what do you think? What do you got? But if we're in the promised land, he can't, he can't approach us because God has already promised that we will be blessed. <clears throat> The children of Israel were promised every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. Yes. Think about this. This is us in 1 Corinthians 3, 21. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. Wherever you put your spiritual yes. foot, God is going to bless you if you are within the promised land. Right. If you're within Amen. the promised land. Amen. He tells the children of Israel, Joshua 1 and 5, As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Yes. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. He tells yes. us, he tells us in Hebrews 13, 5, For he hath said, I will never leave thee right. nor forsake thee. Right. Amen. Oh, friend, he is, he is, the promises he has given us are just as strong. Yes. 
as he has given the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. The last one, he promised the children of Israel success. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, for then shalt, uh, then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Yes. He tells us in Proverbs, he that trusteth in his riches shall fail, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Flourish as a branch? Yes. What does that mean? I'll tell you what a branch does. A branch grows, expands its area, creates leaves, creates yes. fruit. Yes. It, grow, it expands itself. It is success. A, a, a branch that produces is a successful branch. Yes. He tells us we are grafted into the vine. Yes. Right? And if we are yes, grafted God. into the we vine, are the we are going to grow and prosper and produce fruit. Yes. All these things if we are in that promised land. Yes. I'm glad. I'm glad that we can summarize this whole thing in Psalms 18 to the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer. Yes. My God, my strength, yes. in whom I will trust. Amen. My buckler and the horn of my salvation. Yes. And my high tower. The righteous tell us that the, the, his tower, the righteous went into that tower and are safe. Right. Amen. I'm glad we can Amen. trust in him. He gives us those promises that seem so powerful for the children of Israel. Yes. If, we, if they moved into the promised land. Those same promises apply to us today. Our promised land is being in the will of God here today. And of course, our real promised land someday, we will cross over that spiritual Jordan and somehow, someday see him, see him face to face. Yes. Let us, wherever we are today, wherever we are today, let us not be satisfied. Amen. Let us not be satisfied to say, God, give me more, more of you, more of you. All I want, Lord, the song says, is more of you. May God bless you today.